Good evening to you. I'm Ray Addison in the GB Newsroom. Our top story this evening, Just Stop Oil has staged a protest at the wedding of George Osborne to his former aide, Thea Rogers. The group posted this video online, which shows a woman throwing orange confetti over the couple as they leave the church, with security quickly stepping in. The ceremony went ahead despite reports that the former chancellor had called police over an email circulated to guests. According to The Telegraph, the message was sent as part of a distressing campaign of harassment. A number of well-known politicians attended the wedding in Somerset, including former Prime Minister David Cameron and former Health Secretary Matt Hancock. Priti Patel is criticising the BBC over its response to claims that a well-known presenter paid a teenager for explicit pictures. The broadcaster says it's investigating after it was alleged that the man paid more than £35,000 for the images. The Sun newspaper says the 17-year-old's family informed BBC bosses in May. The BBC says it takes allegations very seriously. However, the former Home Secretary is calling for a full and transparent investigation. The Prime Minister says Britain discourages the use of cluster munitions after the United States agreed to send them to Ukraine. President Biden says he stands by his decision despite criticism from human rights groups. Rishi Sunak, who will meet Mr Biden in London on Monday, ahead of the NATO summit, says Britain is supporting Kyiv in other ways. Demonstrators have been protesting today against plans to house asylum seekers on a barge in Dorset. It follows reports that the Bibby Stockholm, which can accommodate 500 people, could arrive this week. Neither Stand Up to Racism or No to the Barge Group want it moored at Portland Port as part of the government's plan to reduce costs by moving migrants out of hotel rooms. And finally, hundreds of French protesters have defied a ban to march through central Paris against police violence. The demonstration comes a week after riots triggered by the fatal shooting by a police officer of a teenager at a traffic stop. Police dispersed the peaceful crowd from Place de la République. France's interior minister says more than 3,000 people were arrested over six nights of those riots. On TV, online, on DAB Plus Radio and on TuneIn 2, this is GB News. Time now for our headliners. Hello and welcome to Headliners, your first look at Sunday's newspapers. I'm Andrew Doyle. I'm joined tonight by the very funny Josh Howey and the very dashing Bruce Devlin. Are you both well? Yes. If he gets dash, I would... I, I think dashing is better... No, funny is better than dashing. Do you think that that's more attractive? Uh, well, I mean, it depends on your priorities, doesn't it? I'm just happy. You're just happy for yeah. being complimentary. Oh, I'm very, trim for my once. beard. Why do I bother trimming for, my beard? For once. We're going to move on and look at the front pages of Sunday's newspapers before we get into it. Sunday Telegraph is leading with BBC under fire over explicit picture scandals. The Sunday Times has the same story there. BBC crisis over star paying teen for sex photos. The Sunday Express. Woke banks, a risk to national security. We're going to be getting into that in a moment. The Sun has BBC Star sent pants pick to teen, a bit more specific there from The Sun. The Mail on Sunday, BBC crisis over top star in sex photos at Probe. And finally, the Daily Star on Sunday, boffs are Britain's biggest bonkers. And those were your front pages. And we're going to kick off with Sunday's Telegraph. Josh, uh, now they're leading with the story that most of the papers are leading with. What's this? BBC under fire over explicit picture scandal. So this is someone who works for the BBC. Uh, we can't really say much because we're, there are legal issues. I mean, obviously, you told me who it was before the show. Yeah, well, I know. And, it's going yeah, on. and, you know, and if you want to find out, just take, you know, tweet Andrew yeah. and he'll tell you totally I'll let you know. I love these kinds of stories where it's all allegations. Yeah. There's no way we can really talk about it because, you know, there's, there's no detail. But it's on the front cover nonetheless, Bruce. I just think £35,000 is an awful lot to spend on photos. It's an awful lot to spend on Because I don't think a lot of OnlyFans subscriptions go above £3.99. Oh, some of them are pretty... 
Pretty high. Anyway, uh, there are other stories on the front of yes. this mm, yeah. Telegraph that we can talk about more, and what are they? Yeah, well, this is actually quite an, this is an important story. Foreign students may take places from British applicants. Now, we know that foreign students basically pay a lot more, up to £25,000 yes. per place, and that has increased, I believe, from a quarter to a third. So it's gone up to uh, a ten... So there's going to be 10,000 fewer spaces for UK Because the foreign students coming, coming over in. here, yeah. taking our university place, paying a lot more into the economy. Well, exactly. Honestly. But it's taking but, our textbooks. But, but universities yeah. are also being encouraged to encourage uh, to bring in more people from uh, poorer economic backgrounds. To Mixed sort of, messages there. Well, it just means that people in the middle, the kind yes. of thick, rich people, <laughs> are going to be squeezed, unfortunately. So this is a problem for universities, though, isn't it, Bruce? Because the truth is, foreign students pay a hell of a lot more. I mean, sometimes three times as much in terms of... In terms oh, of fees. I, I think it's also the same if you come and study in Scotland. I think you have to pay more than... I, I, I don't know who... I never went to university. Um, Very wise. Yes, no, I, th I think, yeah, University of Life. And th that's been costly. Okay. But, and it has affected people in Scotland. There's a real issue of people in Scotland losing their places to... Uh, f foreign students coming in. And but but the universities have to make the money now. I mean, this yeah. is the problem. I mean, they are acting more like businesses now. Uh, you know, there's less funding, there's less support from the government, so it's inevitable that they're going to prioritise the students who are paying more. Well, and this you know? is exactly what's happened, but, of course, then... And actually, and our universities, are, it's an up-up in terms of the soft power that we have, bringing yeah. over talent from abroad. There's so much positive to it, but, of course, we have an indigenous population. Yes, we have a lot of thick middle-class people who need to be looked who after. Need to, you know, who need to go and get their two ones they need in them. sociology. Yep, and, media uh, studies. And, have a, and go to Club Sandwich on a Wednesday night and hopefully get lucky. There we go. There's also on the front of the Sunday Telegraph this picture, Bruce, uh, this is George Osborne getting married. Yes, and congratulations to him. And regardless of what anyone thinks of him as a politician, a chancellor, whatever, I think shame on the woman that disrupted their wedding. What, what happened here? There, there was a, one of these stop oil people or these oh, yeah. climate oh, really? global things, and she ran and she threw... So orange confetti's been the theme of the thing, because they've done it at Wimbledon, haven't yes. they? They did it at the snooker. But this is a wedding. And this is a wedding. So this is someone's private event. No, but isn't throwing confetti allowed at a wedding? I don't think it was thrown... With in good a nice way, through the angry, angry confetti. I think if that were me getting married, I'd be like, well, more, conf more confetti, that's better, and I didn't even have to invite so them. Do you really want political messages on the thing? And but she's wearing the... a white dress. That's, yeah, Doesn't the... go, the colours clash. I, I think white goes with anything, and that oh, includes yeah. orange confetti. Well, congratulations, George. I hope you enjoyed my email. Congratulate you. <laughs> I'm sure it was very nice. I know how much you love George Osborne and all he stands for. OK, we're going to move on to the next Sunday newspaper. This is the Sunday Times. Now, Bruce, obviously, they're going with the BBC crisis as well. Mm -hmm. There's also this story about uh, schools with extra lessons for black students only. Do either of you know what's going on here? I, I, so this is primary schools yes. are being offered extra lessons to facilitate for children of colour. Yes, yes. no, this is by a, an outside organisation called NIA a Academy. And they've been running this for quite a while, apparently. But, but isn't this a bit of an issue? Whereas, because, you know, if you focus singularly on group identity, such as race or something like that, mm. you often overlook the fact that a lot of the people who are performing very badly at schools are, are white as well, white working class kids as well. So wouldn't it be more sensible to run these after school extra activities for the people who are doing worse? irrespective of race, that would include people of all ethnicities. Why does it have to focus on... No, no, no I, I, exactly. Look, any education is good, but the, but the idea of it being anti-racist and the school that it's been carried out, who's paying £400 per child for this... Yes. ..by excluding their white student, and it's also been proven within this article how the white students are actually doing much worse than their black students... ..or yes. their students of, of Caribbean descent or African descent. And so the idea is it's like you have a limited number of resources. So yes. the idea that they're focusing to be anti-racist, but actually it then, of course, becomes racist. And they're also, it seems like the school is like adheres to the whole critical race theory, it sees itself as this anti-racist school. They also like teaching four-year-olds to like um, to, to have a safe space to have racism. It's like, you don't want to be teaching four-year-olds about racism. You don't want to be teaching about the concept of race. I mean, the whole point is, you're all human beings... Yes. ..and you all just are meant to see each other as these individuals. I mean, I think the terrible thing about this, Bruce, is really that, you know, the, the notion of critical race theory, it basically says to these kids, if you're black, you will always be oppressed and you will never do well in life. And if you are white, you are always an oppressor. These are just little kids. You know, they, didn't, they don't need to be racialised in this way. I think just treat everyone equally would be my approach as mm. a sort of old No, 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 I completely agree. Well, 
mean, I, I was someone who obviously happens to be white, and I didn't have a great time at school because I was an undiagnosed di dyslexic and ADHD and all that yes. kind of thing and whatever. But yeah, I'm completely with you. Why, why would you do anything polarizing and to, yeah? It's very strange. We even had the American school in London that was segregating kids for after school activities, segregating them by skin color in the name of anti racism. Feels like a backward step to me. Anyway, we're going to move on now to the Sunday Express. What's this about the bankers, Josh? Oh, this, this has been a real couple of weeks for bankers, hasn't yeah. it? Uh, woke banks a risk to national security. Now, of course, we've had the whole thing with uh, Nigel Farage not getting the bank out, and then it turns out. And not just Farage. Yeah, that's it. Now it's coming out more and more people, and it's not just Rex Tears, it's people with a, a wide spectrum of uh, what are seen as um, not morally pure ideas like yes. there are two sexes and uh, women's rights and sports. Well, and, and now the Ministry of Defence is saying that basically some of yeah. these banks, because they oppose, I suppose... Um, the wep weapons, which aren't great. Weapons but aren't great. But they are a big part of our economy. That's with, the reality. It's to do with government policies, which yeah. these banks... Are. But what I don't understand about all of this is, first, I think we should be discouraging banks from uh, basically being the moral arbiters of everyone else. Yeah. For a start, because they're banks, right? So I don't mm. think they, they are in any position to start hectoring other people about their morality. Uh, but also, it's very dangerous dangerous when they start deciding who gets to have a bank account and who doesn't on the basis of what particular opinions are fashionable at any given time. It's really, really dangerous stuff. And there, there maybe should be some kind of law in place to stop the banks from, from doing this, shouldn't there? Is this what happened with Farage? We don't know quite what right. happened. There have been a number of cases, though, of people losing their bank accounts because they've expressed opinions online or otherwise that the banks don't approve of. So this is a really... And we had it with um, the Free Speech Union, had their PayPal account uh, withdrawn uh, on the basis that, well, we don't know why, but we think it's because that PayPal didn't approve I, their... I, I actually haven't gone public with it yet, but I had my NatWest account closed when I was 12 mm. because it was £1.25 overdrawn for about a year and a half. And then I put the money in... And then they closed my account and sent me the money back. Anti-Semitism, you see. Uh, I, look, I know what you well, said it. I, you said it. I'm just. We didn't push it there. I'm, putting, but, I, I, okay, I'm just putting it out there yeah. as, as a potential it's reason. It's outrageous. Uh, and finally, in this section, uh, headliners' favourite, the Daily Star. Mm. So they always go for a slightly different angle for their front well, covers. This is quite interesting, isn't it? Because I, I, I believe what they mean by boffins uh, and boffs are intellectuals who apparently are hellishly yes. keen on a horizontal refreshment. Apparently they are. This yeah, study. They love it. This study is saying that <laughs> the big, the boff, as they call them, the boffins, so the, 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 the sort of academics and those sorts of people mm -hmm. are having more, well, shall we say casual? Uh, in Encounters. Encounters. That would okay. have been... Uh, Hookups. Hookups, I suppose. And you know what? I can believe this, Josh, because I, I remember when I was in the world of academia and I often used to go to these conferences and there was a lot of people who would go there, you know, they've got a weekend away from the spouse. Horny. Okay. They're a bit randy, as yes. they say. And, yes. uh, and, you know, there's all these intellectual neurons firing, oh. people talking about Foucault. Oh. That's going to turn anyone on. But then, do you know what it reminded me of? Do you remember the advert for the t file men? You know, the big foreheaded thing. So yes. I just see a lot of kind of Oompa Loompa, big forehead kind of people, well, tired of banks, um, you know, <laughs> in, in, enjoying themselves in that way. But then it was in Friends. Yes. Do you not remember when Ross had gone to some convention and then yes. his girlfriend was trying to hook up with Joy? And so That's I, where I get all of my news. Yeah, clearly. But clearly. the thing about this, I mean, it's a bit unrealistic because academics on the What, whole, the Daily Star? Well... What are you talking about, well, Andrew? Firstly, who's done this study? Who cares how much sex that I'm sure are there are facts to back it up. Is the Daily Star, they wouldn't just put a thing no. so they could put the word boffins on the front page. I'm sure they wouldn't. And because they couldn't use the expression clever dicks. You know what? Naughty, naughty, naughty. Dick. They say dick and dick What? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, academics aren't the most sexy of people, are they? They're not the most attractive generally. Do they all I wouldn't want? know. That's just my prejudice. Look, yeah. we've got to take a break now, but coming up, we're going to be talking about drugs, sex, and religion, or as Josh would call it, a traditional Saturday evening. See you in a couple of minutes. That warm feeling inside from boxed boilers. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Hello there, I'm Greg Dewhurst and welcome to your latest GB News weather forecast where we continue to see some heavy showers, possible thunderstorms through the rest of the weekend and still fairly warm and humid across the UK. Looking at the bigger picture in this area of low pressure just sits to the west of us, allowing that warm air to come up from the near continent developing those shower clouds and thunderstorms across the UK right through the rest of the weekend. And we still have thundery showers across the north and the east this Saturday evening. Could be some local disruption. Some longer spells of rain for Scotland, northeast England for a time too into the early hours. But for many, 
it will become quieter. There'll be clear spells, but still fairly warm and humid tonight, particularly in the east, lows of 17 or 18 degrees, whilst the west will be a little fresher. Sunday morning, a bright start for many. Cloud and outbreaks of showery rain pushing into southeast England, and the rain across Scotland takes its time to clear here. And then it's a day of sunny spells and heavy showers once more. Showers most frequent across western parts of the UK. Some thunderstorms could lead to some local disruption, particularly parts of Northern Ireland into Wales, southwest England too. And temperatures overall a little lower compared to Saturday highs around 25 or 20. 6 Celsius. Into the evening time, thunderstorms continue to push their way northwards, but they will ease by the end of the day. And then overnight, we're looking at clear skies once more. And temperatures just dropping a little lower compared to recent nights, but still towns and cities 13 to 15 Celsius. So it means a bright start for many on Monday morning. Plenty of sunny spells, thicker cloud across the north of Scotland. And then all eyes to the west of this area, low pressure starts to bring in more showery rain into western parts, affecting parts of Northern Ireland, Wales, the west country at times too. Elsewhere, a mixture of sunny spells and scattered showers breaking through. Further showers are expected Tuesday and Wednesday. Temperatures a little fresher than they have been of late. That warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Welcome back to Headliners, your first look at Sunday's newspapers. I'm Andrew Doyle. I'm here tonight with Josh Howie and Bruce Devlin. We're going to kick off this section with The Observer and Josh, an entire article just to say the words, I told you so. 
Indeed, we need more EU workers, admits leading Tory Brexiteer. This You'll is... love this story. I love... Oh, I, re I saw this one. I was like, oh, look at this. I'm just looking forward to all the people messaging me during this show. Shut up about Brexit, Josh. Well, go on. Why right, is Brexit a mistake? Let's all right. Well, it's not... OK. George Eustace, he's the former Environment Se Secretary under Boris Johnson. Mm. He's retiring at the next election, so he's just being like, you know what, finally I'm going to do something in politics that you can do when you retire, which is to actually tell the truth. Mm. And he's essentially yes. said that, that, that our immigration policy is not working and, the, and he's got this idea to have these kind of two-year visas for under 35s, to bring okay. them across and have reciprocal visas going on. And the gist of it is, he's saying, it's a lot of Brexiteers are saying, Brexit wasn't done properly, but I think that the idea is we went for the hardest Brexit possible, and it seems like all the soft Brexit ideas were thrown out, and one of them would be an idea like this. But why would this be really to, to do with the decision of whether Brexit was good or bad? What's wrong with sort of saying, let's have a scheme where we bring more EU workers? Well, I guess we the hardest... The, at least we're making the decision about that. I, I guess so, but as things are, he's saying that that is leading to inflation because... Um, and essentially, because one of the ideas for Brexit, that when I've now spent life actually talking to Brexiteers yes. and having nice conversations with them... Is Rather the than just calling them stupid, aren't Yeah, like, oh, you idiot, yeah. <laughs> is, um, is the idea that, that, that... And I hadn't seen that, this I thought before, but about how people coming over from the EU were driving down wages, certainly up north. Yes, and which that, was true. Yeah. yeah. But what, the, what uh, George Eustace, is, it seems to be, is saying is that actually it's driving up inflation because now they're having to increase the fa these wages that they'd already... That, that, so, for workers. Yes. But even now, Brit work, British workers aren't filling those roles and then it's driving up inflation for everybody else. Does that make sense? It kind of <gasps> makes sense. Bruce, do you have any thoughts on this? Not really. No, well, let's move on. <laughs> Sunday Times. And you should never mess with farmers, Bruce. What's this? No, so this is a story from The Times about how asylum chaos and militant farmers led to the collapse of the Dutch government. I love the phrase militant farmers. Can I, just I say know. That? You know what, what does them... that, what does I that think mean? I they're just pretty... Arr! Are they fascist in the field? Pirate I, farmer. I think fascist. they're just very militant with the pigs. Um, you know, whatever do, it is do they do. Do you think... I, see, I have visions of people lobbing huge potatoes at each other, like, to kind of... Kill people. Yeah, anyway, anyway. I, I, I digress. So apparently, the Netherlands are talking about um, um, immigration and migration and all that kind of stuff. So the Netherlands apparently is bursting at the seams. I um, yes. don't know why. So it was perhaps understandable that a row about migration precipitated the political crisis that was brought that has brought down the most dominant Dutch politician of recent times last week. That dominant man is Mark. Now, did we clarify it? Root? No, Mark Rutter. Rutter, right. And Mark okay. Rutter. So he's he's basically said. So the coalition, uh, the other parties in the coalition have said we can't. This is unworkable. Yeah. It's brought the the government down. Mm -hmm. but, you know, to be fair, they've had a massive increase in asylum applications when over a third last year. It was unsustainable. They were trying to find some solution. Isn't it... It says something about the nature of coalitions, though, doesn't it, Josh? That if you can't make this work and you've got a militant farmer party yeah. as part uh. of the coalition and it all falls apart, this is quite but, but But they have made it work for many times and he has been in power for 13, 13 years. years. Yeah. So he, and they're saying that this, just because this is collapsing doesn't mean that it won't necessarily... He can't form the next government, but the complications are that you have this Farmers' Party now, because they've been integrating um, this nitrogen policy like to get yes. their, down to their net zero thing, they are the big second biggest uh, cap per capita pigs and live cattle and whatnot, so they were going to kill half of their cattle. Right. And their farmers went, wait a minute! Okay, I like but that might jeopardise their chance. I mean, if they do get another election mid-November, what they're talking yeah. about. Yeah. And the hope, I suppose, Mark Rutter's hope is the farmers are out. Well, no, because no, because the farmers aren't actually e even in yet. They, they, they're in the upper house. They won the upper oh, house. Oh, yes. But now they're coming in. Their cause is still strong. It's not just farmers and rural areas. Mm. It's also... See, because people are disagreeing with this because they're having to push through these very unpopular policies and it's sort of the perfect storm. So we'll see what happens. But the point is, don't mess with farmers. Don't mess with the farmers. That is the moral of, of this story. story. But we're okay. going to move on to the Telegraph now, this one about drugs. Josh, that's your topic. Indeed. As a few... I'm not implying anything untoward there. OK. Just you, that you know a bit about drugs. Yeah, that we had a fun night last night, and let's just leave that off air, maybe. We'll leave it, we'll leave it. Leave it at that. Uh, OK. Uh, <laughs> as, as few as one in seven few caught with Class A drugs are prosecuted for... Possession. And just to be clear, so Class A, we're talking cocaine. Talking the good stuff. We're talking coke. We're talking heroin. So this is, it's not cannabis. It's you know, it's it's not cannabis is even worse with their statistics in terms of who's been like arrested. So okay, it's one it's in seven. Or anything. It, it, we're talking. I don't know what those are. 
OK, so, well, we're, to mm. Mm. we're talking the, 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 the hard stuff, but, yeah. but that is kind of an incredible statistic, isn't it? If only one in seven are actually being prosecuted, yeah. is there really a, a, a law against... Well, exactly. Drugs? Well, no, because what they've done, these uh, police states, uh, the different police uh, forces across the country have been unofficially bringing in a policy of the first time you get caught you essentially will go to, like, it's more about health and mental health and you sort of... Oh, go, we see, they're trying to they save get a little, you. They're trying to they're save trying, you, yeah, like, give you a warning. Soul. Almost a speed awareness this? course, no pun. Exactly, so it's like very a good. society or something. Yeah, so you... Speed awareness, that was... So I only just got that, Very Bruce. good, uh, yeah. You're Thank very you. You're very quick. No, lock, well, it can be. Lock yeah. four hours away and told to clean spoons or something. So, yeah, but, you know, people... You like would be if you were on mushrooms. But people do make the case, you know, that we, you know, why do we even bother? You know, if the police aren't actually prosecuting these things... Also, cocaine and things like that, we're dealing mostly with the upper middle class people, aren't we? Those are the people who don't get prosecuted. Thank, you know, maybe, maybe, thank the Lord. Maybe, <laughs> Bruce, is there something... I mean, the SNP, we reported a couple of days ago, they're talking about, well, we want to decriminalise no. drugs. Yes. Stop. Uh -huh. There may be a case for that. I, I honestly, I, I, I don't know, because drugs don't really interest me. I'm, I'm only keen on gin. But the fact of the matter is, OK, you know, there's cocaine and all that, kind of, but there's a huge amount of other drugs like GHB, G, Molly, Tina. I don't even know what these things are. So there's a huge... I mean, I don't even know if you get ecstasy anymore. Have a look with them. Oh. OK, let's move on before that deal is struck. Well... We're going to go to the Observer now. Uh, Bruce, uh, what is this about the... Um, so Charging money for weddings? Yeah, this is really interesting. So, to let you understand, during lockdown, I trained as a humanist celebrant in Scotland. You did right? what? I trained as a humanist celebrant. What? So that means you could actually... I was with an agency people. that... And so, in Scotland, you can have the power to marry people, whereas the only people that can marry you legally in England are clergy. But what is this, what's this story? What's the headline here? Well, what, what the thing is that they're saying it's like a poll tax and the Church of England should stop charging couples for weddings, say, vicars. Now, in Scotland, if you want marriage by a, a humanist celebrant, you pay £350 and that's you legally wait. That's a bargain. But what? down what here... What are you doing here? Why aren't you just raking it in up north? Because not many people want to get married in Scotland. That's... Well, I just don't think people want to get married. Okay. Anyway, that, that's another thing. So down here, um, you, your wedding fees can be as much as £641. And then there are amounts on top of that for cleaning the, the church and all yeah, this kind of they, thing they and, and whatever. they don't maintain themselves. Well, I mean, but you, presumably if you go to, like, a, what they call a civil ceremony, it, like what you know, in mm. town hall or something, mm. it's much cheaper, right? Is that I would imagine, yes. But yeah. in a church, church, because they've got you know, there's, there's charges for heating and all that kind of thing, and, and it's nicer, right? You've got the big arches and the stained glass windows, the, the acoustics, incense, and the, the, the high camp. Mm. But this is it, it's dropped. These the, the, they're saying the numbers have dropped by half basically in the last 10 years because yeah. people can't afford it. Well, that's well, they're. That's the argument. Is is it because people can't afford it? And actually, it's a very small part of you. The average wedding is nineteen thousand pounds or so. So if people can afford it, yeah. but there are less people. First of all, I guess getting married in a religious mm -hmm. way, um, and also they, these they, these all-in-one venues. Right. You know, so it's easier to just do it. You know, over a river. You can do it in centre parks. Yeah, if Someone, you want to. That's no one can thing. afford centre parks. But the funny thing is, if, you, if you're a humanist in England, you can charge like up to like a thousand pounds, two thousand well, pounds. Now that you're qualified, I mean, this sounds like a great money. Wow, I didn't know this at all. Was it really? Are you know, you're effectively an internet priest. I am not really interested in other people's happiness, so that kind of turns me off. Okay, yeah, yeah. you don't sound like the sort of person. You know, I'd say, if it's Maybe not my day, why would I be bothered? Divorces or something? Um, yeah, or take a hammer to people. <laughs> okay, well, on that note. <laughs> We're going to leave it for a moment, but after the break, Bruce will discuss the fall of Hollywood and Josh will be talking about front holes. It's disturbing stuff. See you in a moment. <laughs>
Welcome back to Headliners, your first look at Sunday's newspapers. We're going to go straight back with The Telegraph. Now, Josh, there's uh, someone's been remunerated. Indeed. Uh, gender critical barrister wins top payout as judge issues stinging criticism of chambers. This was Alison Bailey, who is an incredible uh, woman. I, I read her life story when she was doing the fundraising and coming from a... Uh, a quite a difficult background. Uh, she's a lesbian. She became a lawyer, top yep. lawyer. And she's basically her garden court chambers, which is where she belonged, she came out with some what are called like gender critical views, i.e., basically that there are only two sexes. Yes. Very basic stuff. And they, um, they were then found guilty for unreasonable conduct. And uh, so she'd already won the case. Yep. And that case is vital because it means that now you can't lose your... You can be discriminated against... You can't be discriminated now by yes. your employer. If the employee finds you sort of liking a J.K. Rowling tweet, they can't fire you or or take, so take your work, which is what they were doing before. It's so bizarre, isn't it, Bruce? And they're still you know, doing it. You know, the, basically, the, the chambers were going after this... Well, a black lesbian who has fought for gay rights over the years and saying that she is being discriminatory or bigoted or whatever because she opposed some of Stonewall's policies. It's weird. But it's a bit like the Joanna Cherry thing back in Scotland it a is, couple yeah. of um, months ago with um, the fringe and all that kind of thing yes. as well. So, yeah, I mean, if that's how she feels, she should be surely allowed to articulate her beliefs and not be penalised professionally yeah. by it. But, she well, was, but she's won the, the point. She won the case. This is slightly different because she won the cost. She first of all doesn't have to pay their nearly like three quarters of a million cost. Yes. But she also won twenty thousand pounds, which doesn't sound like a lot. But in these kind of cases, it's very rare to get some money back. Okay. Well, right. we can move on to the Telegraph now, Bruce. You're a fan of Hollywood, so you will know about. This. Love it. I'm Real Housewives twenty four seven. So Hollywood suffers diversity fatigue in inverted commas as inclusive. Uh, inclusive I can't even say that word. Inclusivity chief. chief stepped down. What is an inclusivity chief? I don't know, but four of them have recently departed. They happen to be black women and made what critics call a mass exodus. Hollywood apparently is suffering diversity fatigue, insiders have said, after four leading inclusion executives left high-profile roles, uh, roles in the space so of 10 days. So these women are basically saying, we're leaving because we don't think the Hollywood, um, oh, sorry, Hollywood studios are taking the notion of diversity seriously enough. <laughs> When I hear the phrase diversity fatigue, I assume the audiences are getting bored of all the woke nonsense. Well, yeah, and you've seen figures go down and you've seen some very big flops recently, online stuff and Hollywood films. Yes. And it's interesting here because, well, one, one of the people is going off to found their own company, so mm. it sounded like, yeah, from the title, you think, oh, is the scam over now? But, it, but, but it's an interesting thing that, that, that critics of these studios are saying, wait a minute, you're losing your diversity, Chief. Mm. That, you said that you were behind, like, Black Lives Matter and whatnot, and now it doesn't matter. And they're saying mm. uh, these initiatives are often the first on the chopping block when they're trying to tighten their belts. Well, especially but, when they lose a lot of money Well, this people. is it. Not only does it cost the price of these, the, the, these people's uh, job, you know, their, their salaries... Yes. ..but there's an argument that actually... The pushing these diversity quotas is lowering the quality or, or, uh, of the product, and there's less people are watching. I so mean, it's costing them twice over. Surely, I mean, look, it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't bother me if if you have the Little Mermaid as a, as a black actor or anything. You know, what matters to me is the performance, right? But sometimes they do shoehorn in, even in historical films, uh, diversity quotas that actually make the thing feel unrealistic. Well, it's a bit like the reboot of Sex and the City, and just like that, the first season was really hyperly, you know, hyperly criticised for jamming every kind of whatever, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. It, it, it was just too much, and it wasn't necessarily what people thought were authentic to these characters. Well, it feels a bit preachy. It feels a bit like they're saying to the audience, we think you're not diverse enough and you're not uh, tolerant enough. But, of course, most people who go to cinema, of course they're tolerant. Well, they and care. when it becomes secondary to a good story, yeah, that's exactly, the real issue. Exactly. Yeah. OK, but we're going to move on now to uh, another... Oh, no, is this the Telegraph? No, this is the Mail this time. Mm. Josh, what's this one about? Now health professionals are urged to call vaginas bonus holes. Now, look... That just sounds incredibly misogynistic. That's because it is incredibly right. misogynistic. This is coming from Joe's Cervical Cancer Trust. So, a, 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 a charity for cervical cancer, of which I believe none of us are going to be getting, i.e. it's for women. You're making an assumption. I, I am making an assumption yes. based on facts. Uh, and <laughs> they are now saying that because they don't want to... Um, offend yes. uh, trans women or non-binary people, 
that this is some of the this is on their website of like a thing that you could call a vagina instead so, of so a they're bonus not, hole. So they're, they're worried about not offending non... By offending trans. everybody else. But they don't mind offending women. No, so they'll they, offend they, half the population yeah, to, to protect. possibly offend a not offend a non-binary person who has... So don't, they need some PR, don't they, Bruce? I mean, because someone should have said the phrase bonus hole. It's so degrading that I, it feels like a joke. Why is it a bonus it? hole, by the way? Why is it not the... the, the why is the other one not the bonus hole? Well, I, I was going to... I didn't know if I could bring Sorry. that up. Well, um, let's not but be too graphic No, no, no. It. So, I, 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 what, what you were talking about, I refer yeah. to as the secondary meal. And my point would be that this, <laughs> this seems like something that a kind of weird teenager might say. Doesn't it, Joe? Um, you know, in a kind of bragging way or whatever. And I, I would have thought that... Uh, we, we won't go into it, but I think you know where my mind has gone. Yes, but isn't it, like, can't we just get out back to the point that the, the word vagina is not offensive? The word uterus is not offensive. Like these, it's always women who seem to be the ones that are degraded in this way. They're called bleeders or people who menstruate. Or and this is by Tampax, I think, referred to, the, to their customers as people who bleed. It's like this stuff is really, really degraded. Yeah, I mean, a, a hole, just using a hole, like referring to a hole, you know what I mean? It's a, as a incredible. hole. Like, it, it's, just, it's disgusting. Absolutely incredible. Okay, we're going to stay with the mail on Sunday now. And what's this about, Bruce? This is a Yale physician demands doctors be forced to wear body cams to catch out racist staff. A Yale University physician said doctors should be forced to wear body cameras to catch racist doctors, as she claims to have seen a black teen. I'm quoting, die in the ER as colleagues chuckled and said he's just another criminal. Now, okay. if that has gone on, that is appalling. Of course. But you would kind of think, like, doctors wearing body cams and all that kind of stuff, would there not be CCTV? And if, I, I just... There's something a bit weird about it. I completely agree, obviously, that's disgusting. And, yeah. And, you know, but, you know, and you could say, well, you know, if, if, if doctors were forced to wear body cams, Harold Chipman would never have got away with what he got away with. But there's, an, there's a sort of greater issue here about privacy and about... Body cams on doctors. Doctors are doing very intimate examinations with mm. people. And, and the level of mistrust that kind of insinuates in a hospital or in any kind of medical establishment, that has costs as well, doesn't it? Yeah, and you know, no one's saying that racism doesn't exist. And yeah. in America, particularly, I believe there are some different outcomes according to ethnicity. Yes. Certainly when it comes to a healthy baby, babies yeah. being delivered and whatnot. But as you say, there are privacy issues mm -hmm. and you have to weigh these things up, count catching someone making an inappropriate joke or mm. being racist versus uh, the invasion of privacy for the patient and for the doctor. Yeah, Bruce. It's, it's not also, working. who's reviewing the footage? Right. That, right, that would yeah. be the thing. So they would have to set up boards then to like do shift reviews of every operation or, or, or this whatever. Is, this is a debate that civil liberties groups have all the time. You know, you could say, well, if we had CCTV on every street corner, there would be no crime. We'd also have no privacy. Yeah. And there, there would be serious well, this, implications. This reminds me of a book called The Circle, uh, and it's all about what happens in the future where everybody gets these personal cameras and I don't really have a point to make I just wanted to say I read a book. Oh good. Uh, yeah, no, well done, Did you enjoy yeah. it? Yeah, it was right. Yeah. There, were, there yeah. were pictures? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I listened I was, to I say, a book. It was a comic book. It was a comic book. <laughs> I listened to a book. It was a Ruby Wax one oh. and it was very oh, good. good. I like it. Okay, yeah. so next is the Metro and if being old didn't mean you didn't get treated bad enough apparently being old and gay, Bruce, is... is yeah, really th bad. this really kind of made me... Mm. So a charity receives more than 400 reports of homophobic abuse in the care home system. Uh, some 246 whistleblowers and 177 partners of victims have contacted Compassion and Care's Helpline with 392 of them feeling the relevant authorities failed them. Isn't this depressing? I mean, when you think that we're getting yeah. better when it comes to homophobia. But we're not. That's the whole thing. I, I genuinely, I don't think we are. Um, I, I think it's actually kind of on the rise, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. And I'm amazed that it's still such a concern to people. And isn't it particularly like in care homes where you expect, like, well, you, yeah. these are the most vulnerable people, Josh. Yeah. So these are the I think there are two interesting things apart from this being obviously a, a horrible thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is number one is arguably this would be on the increase as I'm imagining people who came out uh, earlier are now getting older and older. And mm -hmm. certainly when you see married couples yes. now getting old, married gay couples get, mm -hmm. going into, um, as someone here, they're talking about horrible stuff about someone with Alzheimer's yeah. and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So this is going to be, there are going to be more gay couples, arguably, within this system. That's yeah. number one, so this has to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. number two, this is quite interesting because here we are in the Metro, quite a sort of woke newspaper, even though I don't like using that word particularly, and they've actually called out what the problem is. 
in a yes. sort of inadvertent way, which is essentially that you nursing homes employ a lot of people. They don't say the word Africa, but it's essentially from Africa, where they have different attitudes towards homosexuality, i.e. a lot of them are homophobic. Yes. And this is... They actually... The, from a, the diversity trust, they actually call it out. That's That really it's surprising. employing people from places where... Homos they do it in a sort of mealy mouth way, yep. but you get the gist of it. And yes. I think... Finally, we can just start talking about it. Can we just talk about this and go, there's an issue and we have different cultures around the world and of we course. can start then dealing with the problem and certain people need to uh, understand that if you're working within this system that we live in a society where homosexuality is part of our society and mm. it isn't a sin and yeah. whatever and, 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 and this is how it happens with their But if you can't call out the problem, you're not going to well, sort it out. Well, like you say, Josh, interesting that they've actually uh, raised that issue explicitly. Anyway, uh, that's all for this section of the show. But in a few minutes, we're going to be covering surprising disabilities, questionable reparations and offensive posters. So see you in a minute. Welcome back to Headliners, your first look at Sunday's newspapers. We're going to start this section with The Telegraph. And, uh, Bruce, what's this about cows? Yes, this is an Oxford museum that sends cows to Maasai families to compensate for stolen artefacts. Now, this is Pitt Rivers Museum. It says the cows are a symbolic gift of reconciliation, but local Kenyan leaders warn further compensation is expected. The objects include hereditary necklaces, yes. um, a bracelet passed from father to sons, an earring and a neck ornament worn by a married woman. According to Maasai tradition, these items may never be borrowed, given away or sold. But they can so be stolen. 
which is fine. Well, yeah, that's the thing. But I don't know where they're getting the cows from. And it's 98 cows. That's a lot of cows. That's a lot of cows. And also, who knows, you know, that's assuming that they're... They want cows. Like, it's also assuming, like, if they're just... Yeah, you should ask them. ...up in an office... Yeah. ...then maybe all these Maasai people, they're all, like, in offices... And, and how are the cows getting there? Well, maybe they buy local. Or it could be just a sponsorship thing, like, in your name, we have bought a, a cow called Daisy, and you can visit... Or, like, Daisy naming write, a star. And you can write letters to Daisy and whatnot. I don't know. Or would Daisy write to you? Yeah, like, they'll get someone else. But, the, yeah. but it's, it's a wonderful thing, but the, it's, not, it's not enough. Uh, there's also a head ornament worn by young women after circumcision. I don't know why you really want to associate with that. Like, oh, we want that back. Like, no, I think you maybe want to leave that one back This, in, this is back a big debate that goes on about museums all over the world, yeah. whether things should go back to whether... You know, but the problem with that is once you open those floodgates... Once you start sending cows, <laughs> then where, what else? Geese? Well, that Donkeys, actually wouldn't be a bad idea. Goats. I mean, this is... So, it feels to me a bit condescending as well. Like, oh, we've... You know what? We've given you some cows. Cows are very valuable. Oh, no, I'm sure they're valuable, yeah. but it feels... I think they just wanted cash, basically. OK. Well, look, we're going to move on now to the Telegraph again. Josh, is that you? Yes. The reason why you can never remember any... Oh, there, I see! That was a joke! That was, that was very good! The reason why oh. you can... This is about not remembering anyone's face. So, it's like, Josh, this is you. Oh, forget it's it. Clever. It's too clever. I, I don't know too, why I bother. Too clever. I'm, I apologise. That was funny. I'm laughing internally. Thank you for that joke. That's the best kind of joke. That's response. the best kind of joke that only... Yeah. Many people <laughs> yeah. laugh at internally. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is... People have this decision, uh, uh, condition called uh, prosopagnosia. Prosopagnosia. Where, yeah, you, where you can't pronounce big words. Ah. ah. So uh, you can make that, Oh, yeah, that was nice. Thank you. I like your little sake light. Ah. Yeah, yeah that's you. all you're getting. You got me you got back. Supposedly, Stephen Fry's got it. Um, Joanne and Joan Lanamy. She was in a podcast last week with Vernon Kay, and she was talking about how she has it. And she says this is why she kisses everybody, because she just... To, to, to not be rude. And I thought she was being nice to me. Good. OK, so you just didn't know who she I was. Oh, nice. you met her? No, I was just making a joke. OK. But the thing is, but this is the thing. So but a lot of people, when you meet them and then you... Yeah. Lo Joanna Lummy says she'll go off to get a drink and come back and, and she won't be, know who to give the wine yeah. to because she can't recognise the face that she was just speaking maybe to. Maybe that's the reason she doesn't recognise the face because she's maybe had more than one drink. Right. But it's one in 33 people <laughs> have this condition to some degree. My uh, neighbour has it. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, we, we, we're quite close and all that kind of thing, and sometimes she will walk past me in the building and I'm like, hi. Are you sure she's not just being rude? No, no, mm. no. Did you play the music, no. play the music loud? No, no. But don't you no. think, Bruce, this could be a cover for rude people? Because there are some yeah. people who just don't make the effort to learn who you are and learn what your name is, and now, they can, now they've got a word for it and they can say it's a condition. Yeah, it's... Uh, and like it's the face here. So yeah. Br yeah, Brad Brad Pitt says he's got it, but... I, uh, I, think, I think he's smoking. Well, no, let's not assume. OK, maybe, possibly. Maybe, maybe he has got it, but there is there is a, an argument that we are in an overdiagnostic culture, and, the, and I don't deny that these people have it, but there are some people who are going to pretend they've got no it. No-one's so forgetting Brad Pitt's face, let's just put it that way. No. Yes, no, that's true. It's a very, very pretty face. Uh, we're going to move over to the mirror mm. now, Bruce, and uh, what's this one about transport for London? Yes, TL, uh, TFL, should I say, by a poster for a play because it features an unhealthy wedding cake. Wait a minute, so there's a poster, it's there. a play, like you say. So, this is material to adv advertise Tony and Tina's wedding, a dinner show at Wonderville Haymarket, used an image of a three-tiered sponge cake, but do TFL... We have, do, we, do we have the picture? I, I don't oh, so there we go. So, wait a minute, so th that's just advertising a fun musical yeah. play. So uh -huh. It's fattest. So the one on the left there is what it originally was, because it has the sugar, big sugary cake. And they've taken the cake out. And then on the right is what the censored see, version. I want to see the play on the left. I don't want to see the one on the right. No. That looks boring. So this reminds me, do you remember when Sadiq Khan uh, came to power and he wanted to ban... Um, there was an advert from Protein World. Uh, are you beach, beach body uh, ready? Are you beach body ready? I was in ready? that. Yes. Well, in like, that. Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. But it had a, a woman in a bikini who looked very attractive. And yes. he was saying, well, this is sexist. And he pledged to take all this down. Mm -hmm. But as a lot of feminist writers at the time said, this is really patronising, you know, we're perfectly able to walk past a picture of a skinny woman and not go home and starve ourselves to death. You know? Absolutely, it's... and it's cost them, like, £5,000 more to redesign it. Um, and uh, I would just like to say that I have seen this play and it's really good. I saw it. Oh, it's actually good? Yeah, it's really good. It's like a, it's one of those things where everyone's in character and you're in it's like, and they're, they're arguing, everyone's arguing with each other. Really... And is there a cake in it? Uh, oh, well, that's advertising standards. Yeah, if they that... haven't actually got the cake, yeah, then they should what? take the cake off the advert. I don't remember the cake. Anyway, yeah. we're going to move on now to this one from the Metro. Sleeping in separate beds, you must be used to that. 
<laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, yes, man. We all do. Leaves. <laughs> <laughs> man leaves girlfriend furious oh. after he asks to sleep in separate beds. And this is they'd moved in after three years. Yeah. And he wanted to. He went online. He went to Reddit, which is where you should go to for all of your uh, relationship advice. Yes. And uh, and he basically said, look, am I the bad guy here? Because she snores. Yes. She sleeps on top of him like a cat. Oh, wow. And and he, and he needs you know to what? sleep. Uh, to be honest, if, if your partner snores, and a lot of part people's partners do, people mm -hmm. do lose sleep and their lives are really, you know, I don't see a, a problem with sleeping in a different bed, but you can also get earplugs, can't you? Yes. You know, there are other ways. The whole thing. What, what do you think, Bruce? Very quickly. I'm, I am a very keen snorer, so uh, I, I think you just have to take your own risks. OK, fair enough. Well, the show is nearly over, but before we leave, we're going to have another final look at Sunday's front pages. We're going to start with the Sunday Telegraph. They are leading with BBC under fire over explicit picture scandals. This is the story that is dominating most of the front covers, including The Times, their BBC crisis over star paying teen for sex photos. Sunday Express goes differently with woke banks, a risk to national security. The Sun has a BBC star sent pants pick to teen. Mail on Sunday has a BBC crisis over top star in sex photos probe. And finally, the Daily Star boffs are Britain's biggest bonkers. That's all we've got time for. Thank you to my guests, Josh Howie and Bruce Devlin. Josh is back tomorrow with Paul Cox and Victor Daniels. And if you're watching the 5am repeat of this show, please do stay tuned because it's time for The Breakfast Show. The temperature's rising. Boxed solar. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Hello there, I'm Greg Dewhurst and welcome to your latest GB News weather forecast. Well, we continue to see some heavy showers, possible thunderstorms through the rest of the weekend and still fairly warm and humid across the UK. Looking at the bigger picture in this area of low pressure just sits to the west of us, allowing that warm air to come up from the near continent developing those shower clouds and thunderstorms across the UK right through the rest of the weekend. And we still have thundery showers across the north and the east this Saturday evening. Could be some local disruption. Some longer spells of rain for Scotland, northeast England for a time too into the early hours. But for many, it will become quieter. There'll be clear spells, but still fairly warm and humid tonight, particularly in the east, lows of 17 or 18 degrees, whilst the west will be a little fresher. Sunday morning, a bright start for many. Cloud and outbreaks of showery rain pushing into southeast England, and the rain across Scotland takes its time to clear here. And then it's a day of sunny spells and heavy showers once more. Showers most frequent across western parts of the UK. Some thunderstorms could lead to some local disruption, particularly parts of Northern Ireland into Wales, southwest England too. And temperatures overall a little lower compared to Saturday highs around 25 or 20. 6 Celsius. Into the evening time, thunderstorms continue to push their way northwards, but they will ease by the end of the day. And then overnight, we're looking at clear skies once more. And temperatures just dropping a little lower compared to recent nights, but still towns and cities 13 to 15 Celsius. So it means a bright start for many on Monday morning. Plenty of sunny spells, thicker cloud across the north of Scotland. And then all eyes to the west of this area, low pressure starts to bring in more showery rain into western parts, affecting parts of Northern Ireland, Wales, the west country at times too elsewhere, a mixture of sunny spells and scattered showers breaking through. Further showers are expected Tuesday and Wednesday. Temperatures a little fresher than they have been of late. The temperature's rising. Boxed solar. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News.
Congratulations to GB News Breakfast, voted by you as the nation's best multi-channel news programme at the prestigious Trick Awards. Ah, there you are, lovely people, welcome along. Uh, and in a packed programme tonight, as they used to say, we'll be joined by Reclaim Party MP Andrew Bridget, uh, who this week raised in Parliament the issue of Nigel Farage being denied a bank account, among much else, I have to say, a very busy week for Andrew. Uh, we'll also be talking to Andrew Bridget together with Dr David Lloyd about the Pfizer vaccine rollout later in the show. And finally, uh, we'll be discussing the return of 38 hazel dormice uh, to the heart of the National Forest in a large secluded woodland. Uh, what an antidote to woke are the sleepy dormice. All of that, plus plenty of chat with my brilliant panellist, journalist Julie Cook. But first, an update on the latest news with Ray Addison. Thanks, Neil. Here's the latest from the GB Newsroom and our top story. The Prime Minister says Britain discourages the use of cluster munitions after the United States agreed to send them to Ukraine. President Biden says he stands by his decision despite criticism from human rights groups. Rishi Sunak, who will meet Mr Biden in London on Monday, ahead of the NATO summit, says Britain is supporting Kyiv in other ways. UK is signatory to a convention which prohibits the production or use of cluster munitions and discourages their use. We will continue to do our part to support Ukraine against Russia's illegal and unprovoked invasion. We've done that by providing heavy battle tanks and most recently long-range weapons. You know, and hopefully all countries can continue to support Ukraine. Well, meanwhile, Ukraine's President Zelensky has visited Snake Island to mark 500 days of war. The area in the Black Sea was retaken by the Ukrainian armed forces a year ago. President Zelensky is now in Istanbul, holding talks with Turkey's President Erdogan in his first, vis first visit to the country since the start of the conflict. Demonstrators have been protesting against plans to house asylum seekers on a barge in Dorset. It follows reports that the Bibi Stockholm, which can accommodate 500 people, could arrive this week. Neither Stand Up to Racism Dorset or No to the Barge Group want it moored at Portland Port. It's part of the government's plan to reduce costs by moving migrants out of hotel rooms. At least 350 people have crossed the English Channel today. It follows the highest single-day figure this year of 686. That was yesterday. No to the Barge Group organiser Alex Bailey says he won't stop fighting. We're going to continue our campaign open letters. We are going to talk to them in person if we can. Next week there is an open council meeting with Dorset Council. We are going to attend. We today then are going to make our voices heard and the people of Portland, the people of Weymouth and the people of Dorset. The BBC is reportedly investigating a claim that one of its well-known presenters paid a teenager for explicit pictures. It's alleged that the man paid more than £35,000 for the images, with the son saying the young person was 17 years old. The newspaper says the teen's family complained to the broadcaster in May. In a statement, the BBC said it takes any allegations very seriously and will act on any information that comes to light. The family of an eight-year-old girl who was killed in south-west London have described her as intelligent and cheeky. Selina Lau died after a Land Rover crashed into a prep school in Wimbledon on Thursday. Another eight-year-old girl is in a life-threatening condition, and a woman in her 40s remains in a critical condition. The 46-year-old female driver, arrested on suspicion of causing death by dangerous driving, has been bailed pending further inquiries. The, aunt, the Chancellor admits that halving inflation is proving harder than expected. Jeremy Hunt says the Tories' pledge of inflation reaching 5% by the end of the year is going to be more challenging than first fought. Mr Hunt also says tax cuts can't be introduced if it makes the battle against inflation more difficult. Inflation currently stands at 8.7%. Hundreds of French protesters have defied a ban to march through central Paris against police violence. The demonstration comes a week after riots triggered by the fatal shooting by a police officer 
of a teenager at a traffic stop. Police dispersed the peaceful crowd from Place de la République. France's interior minister says more than 3,000 people were arrested over six nights of riots. The wedding of George Osborne to his former aide has gone ahead despite reports that he called in police over an email circulated to guests. According to the Telegraph newspaper, the message was sent as part of a distressing campaign of harassment. A number of well-known politicians have been seen arriving at the service in Somerset, including former Prime Minister David Cameron and former Health Secretary Matt Hancock. We're on TV, online, on DAB Plus Radio and on TuneIn 2. This is GB News. Back now to Neil. True natures are worth seeing. Glimpses of what lies beneath a surface projected to deceive. Once seen, that true nature is never forgotten. Last week, GB News commercial director Nicole O'Shea attended an advertising awards show in Manchester to present some gongs and for her efforts was howled at by a baying mob of ad industry professionals, foul-mouthed, fist-pumping hate merchants who sought to drive her from the stage and from the event. Pause and remember this was an event organised by the advertising industry, but conducting itself more like a neo-religion as intolerant as any other. The abusers were professional people representing an industry that, in terms of the preachy, condescending mission statements we, the intended audience, have rammed down our throats morning, noon and night by that industry, is supposedly all about inclusion, diversity and equality. But it's never about what they say it's about. Since before even a second of content had been transmitted by GB News, we'd been the target of well-funded efforts to shut us down. As well as targeting the channel, individuals in front of the camera and behind are set upon too. Much of the abuse and attempted destruction has been choreographed by an outfit calling itself, ironically, Stop Funding Hate, that employs all means at its disposal to try and make any company that advertises with us the target of bullying to have them sever their ties. Those frauds, with the gall to pretend they're about doing away with hate, stoke hatred at every turn to get what they want. One ad agency after another, all the key players based inside the London bubble, obviously, in one ad campaign after another, exploits the notions of kindness, inclusion, diversity and equality. But scrape away the insincere exterior and what lies beneath is their true nature, made of hatred, exclusion and the determination to drive from society anyone those haters deem a threat to their own ugly utopia. The truth can't be concealed forever. And the truth of those targeting GB News for having the temerity to give voice to the majority of people